people who like to improve themselves often get trapped in the cycle of reading books, but not actually taking the action required. It's like reading every single book there is about how to play the piano and then sitting in front of it and expecting to be able to play like Elton John. What I realised is, people love reading about the theory of something but not actually practising it. Now what a lot of people do is, my previous self included, was to read lots and lots of books and think that that's a fair trade for experience. Listen, a porn star don't become a porn star from reading a book, she does it from sucking. How do you get knowledge without books then? Books provide information, not knowledge. Duh! This information gets filtered into your brain via a framework of the world that you already understand. So if you are already a thick fuck, then adding extra information into the mind of a thick fuck will just get lost in the thick fucked upness of said mind. Reading won't solve that. For some people, a sodding lobotomy won't solve that. There's also an element of what we like to call confirmation bias. People tend to read books they already agree with, to bolster their already lopsided view of a certain subject or of the world. If their unbalanced worldview was represented by their body's balance, they'd end up walking like a crab. Or poor old Benny No Bones, the boy with the boneless body, who had to be propped up with so much metal scaffolding he looked like a fucking transformer. I made that up. We all know that you only truly learn things by doing them, by experiencing them. Trial and error, that's how we learn. Unless you run into traffic. Reading a book can give you an insight, or it can give you the motivation to start, but it can't give you the experience. Anyway, you should be careful with books. A friend of mine had his thesaurus stolen last week. He's lost for words. It gets worse. He went to the library to get another one. He slipped and fell over. Eyewitness said he walked into the non-friction section. An acceptable way to deal with this is the yin yang method. Because there are actually times when you need to read and learn from your masters. These are the people who have done what you intend to do. You go into hibernation mode. Because it's very hard to be yin and yang at the same time. Just ask Mr. Yin and Mr. Yang. Yin and yang all sounds a bit woo woo, bit zen, bit mystical. Next I'll be telling you how to leave your body at full moon, read your astrological barometer and look inside yourself until you start crying because all the emotions come flooding out of your crown chakra. Christ, it's easy to make twaddle up. Enter hibernation mode. Get the books, stack them up and read them one by one. Then when you finish the last book, it's yang time. It's time to do, to put the plan into action and to mother flipping conquer, to go all in. You're being a reader, then an action taker. A consumer, then a producer. And no, not a film producer like pedo Harvey Weinstein and his pizza gate. God, imagine being so rich you can afford a gate made of pizza. You'd have to get it remade every couple of days because it would go manky when it rained or people just would be walking past eating it. Also, can we just stop for a second and admire how humble am I? I'm probably the most humble guy in the world. I mean, I'm such a great guy. I'm telling you all this not to read books. and I could be selling you mine. Yes, I've written a series of books. Which sell about as many copies as Harold Shipman's cat's book, Me Outside of the Story. So that's why he doesn't want people to read. He's bitter because his own books don't sell. No, oh, piss off. If you're really that interested. This book is the first in the Felix Freeman series. It's about a man who moves into a house share in London after splitting up with his girlfriend. And there happens to be a wizard detective who lives in the attic. Anyway, the main character gets roped into all sorts of magical adventures and helping Felix, the wizard detective, solve a grisly murder by magic in Covent Garden. It really is the best book I've ever written or read. And you can get all of this by clicking on the link in the description. Only took me six months to write. But don't read books, but read mine. 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 Oh, oh God, I've tripped my own software. I'm overheating. The current education system is based almost entirely on reading textbooks. The poor little slaves, they push through the sausage factory of state education, which could just as easily be done by opening their skulls and tipping in a hundred textbooks. It ain't a test of intelligence. It's one of memory and recall. That's why I was no good at school. Got the memory of a goldfish. Fish food! <gasps> How to use books. Believe me, I was stuck in this trap for years because it was cosy and warm to be coddled by the words of those wiser than I. Or so I thought. Because nowadays I'm the wisest motherfucker walking this patch of planet Earth. <laughs> Funny. 
Books are great, don't get me wrong. This is only a very recent development in my psyche. Also, most books are boring as fuck and can be summed up in about 15 minutes. And the authors are usually drier than a dead nun's knickers. When you're young, and if you do know what you actually want to be and do in the bloody world, read books by people that have done that thing. Autobiographies and stuff like that. Because success leaves clues. And then go even further. Go and find a master, someone you can watch and learn from and be apprenticed to. Like I said earlier, books can be dangerous. I once saw a book fall on a librarian's head. To be fair, she only had her shelf to blame. Another time I got this book about anti-gravity. It was impossible to put down. 